In this video, we'll talk about return statements and recursion. In a previous video, we talked about how the value that you get from a function is called the return value. If I call type parentheses for end parentheses, I get the return value of class int. How does the type function return the class int value? Well, we print out the type parentheses for, and I get class int as seen here. Let's write a function that adds two numbers and returns our own custom result the same way how the type function gets a result. We'll call the function add underscore two underscore numbers. We'll follow the same function format that we've learned in past videos where you have the DEF keyword space name of the function, two parameters for the first number, second number, and we're creating a variable called result. Now there's a new line, return result. This is how you return a value. You do a return, and then after the return, you can put any value or variable. If we were to call this function, let's say that we wrote y equals, and then we use the function add underscore two underscore numbers, parentheses one comma two to add one plus two, and then this will return a three because we can see result is equal to num one plus num two, which is one plus two, and then we return a result. So what gets returned is three, just like how the type function works. So we get y equals three, and when we print out y, we get three. Just to really drill this down, we will do the same thing, but with type parentheses four. We'll have the same setup, the same format, x equals type parentheses four, and you can see that if I print x, I print out the return value, just as I did with the function that we just created, where we did return result. The return statement also ends the function. The reason why I bring up the return statement here is that you can reuse the return keyword inside a conditional and it ends the function. We learned about conditionals in the last video. Let's change our function a little bit. Let's say that we're adding two positive numbers add underscore two underscore positive underscore numbers and we take two parameters we check each number if it is positive or negative if it's negative then we write this line that has return but nothing after it you'll find out what this does in a little bit and then our else will add the two numbers because if num1 is not negative and num2 is not negative then add num1 and num2 and then last but not least, we'll print that num1 and num2 are added, and then we'll return the result that we got from adding num1 and num2. Now, if I were to call add underscore two underscore positive underscore numbers with one negative number, we'll do negative one plus one. You can see the function here. This is what it looks like. We're just using the conditionals that we learned in the last video, where we check num1 is less than zero, num2 is less than zero, and then we use this line where it says return empty, but then at the bottom, this return result happens. Now, let's try to call this function with a negative number and a positive number, and you can see what happens with return. When you use return without anything after it, well, first thing, using a return statement ends the function, and then we get this none. What is this none? Well, it means exactly what it implies, nothingness. Because there was no value after the return, you get a none. And this is how Python just works. When there's nothing after a return, if you print out the return value, you get a none. And this is useful for just ending a function. And not only ending a function, you can also return none to say that nothing happened or there was nothing returned. Using returns with conditionals will help you limit your function to a specific behavior like what we just did, adding only two positive numbers. When we do one plus one, we get a two. Because the else statement is triggered, re result equals num1 plus num2 because both numbers are positive, so those if conditionals did not get triggered, and then we return a result, giving us the positive return value, which was a two. Let's talk about recursion. In a previous video, we used a function that we created inside another function. But what is recursion? Recursion is the term used when a function calls itself. A function triggering itself inside the function? You might be thinking that triggering the function in itself 
would lead to an infinite repetition of the function constantly triggering itself. However, you use a conditional that we learned in the previous video that stops the function when you're ready to stop. A conditional that stops a function calling itself is called the base case. It's a terminology used to say that, oh, this conditional will stop a recursive function from calling itself. For example, let's say that we're creating a countdown function celebrating the new year. You can see that we use the typical function format, but here we have conditionals. In the conditional, we check if the number currently is zero, and then once the number is zero, we know that it's a new year, so we print new year. But in the else statement, we do something interesting. We print number, and then we calculate the next number by decrementing, by subtracting one with the current number, and then we call the countdown function again. The countdown function is something that we're already using. So the countdown function is repeating itself inside the function. It's triggering itself. So we have 10, we subtract it by one because it's not zero, then you get nine. Nine, okay, we repeat the function countdown, and then we constantly are decrementing because we're making a countdown from 10 to zero for the new years. So we go 10, nine, eight, and so on until we get to zero. If num is not zero, we count down again, bringing the number down one number. And you can see that this is a repetition. It constantly happens starting from 10, decrements every single time, subtracting one each time we're not at zero. And then finally, once we're at zero, the countdown is finished and you print new year. You can notice that there are two main parts of recursion. The first part is progress. We make sure that there is some sort of progress every time we use the function again. In the example, we decrease the number that we're using by one. The number is perpetually decreasing, which means that there is a progression towards an end. The second part is a base case. We make sure that a base case occurs when we reach our goal, which is zero. When we count down from 10, we want to count down to zero eventually. So we do a conditional to see if we have reached zero. And once we have reached zero, we print new years. You can see here that every time there's 10, 9, 8, 7, and so on until we reach new years, zero is our base case and we check for zero and we print it out. Recursion is just a way that you make your function, but recursion can also be done through iteration. What is iterations? Iterations means repeating a process one at a time. You notice that when we use recursion, we were looping basically. You know, we were doing a countdown and we we're repeating one step every single time until we reached our goal. We we're subtracting by one. Well, you can do the manual way where you just write each step one by one, line by line. That's what iteration means. Here we print three lines. In our print underscore three underscore lines functions, all it does is that I wrote print parentheses with nothing inside it three times. And this is iteration because I'm manually printing out three empty lines through iterations. Any iteration can also be done recursively and you can use recursion. It's just a different way of doing things. Recursion, it takes a moment to think about because remember there are two parts. Part one, it's the progress. You need to have progress in your recursion function. Part two is a base case. We need to know the endpoint. And to make the base case, we have a conditional to check if we've reached our endpoint yet. Decreasing a number or increasing a number is usually a good way to make progress. And in this case, when we create our function, recursion underscore print underscore num underscore lines with the num parameter, I think we will check for subtracting by one again, by decreasing to make our progress. And then a usual base case is checking for zero. So we start at three and we're basically counting down to zero. That's how recursion underscore print underscore num underscore lines will work. Each time we are not at zero, we'll print out that a new empty line. Now let's see how this works. Three is greater than zero, print a new line. Then we do three minus one equals two because it's greater than zero. We repeat the function. Two is greater than zero print a new line again. 2 minus 1 equals 1 because num is greater than 0. Then we repeat the function again. 1 is greater than 0, print a new line. 1 minus 1 is now equal to 0. 
Now we repeat the function again with zero, but zero is not greater than zero. So this if conditional is skipped, which stops the function because there is nothing left to do. When you think of recursion, it gets to be something that you have to just think about step by step and see that right now it does the same exact thing as iterations. It printed three empty lines. Recursion is an important concept to understand because some very specific problems are much easier to solve with recursion. For example, I'll name a problem that is easier to resolve, resolve with recursion, the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci numbers are a sequence of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. You can Google it. This problem is easier to solve with recursion than through iterations, manual iterations. It's a very specific problem, which happens to be easier to solve with recursion. The majority of the time, if you're not dealing with a specific type of problem that works well with recursion, you should use iteration. Let's really talk about what recursion is all about. First, let's talk about the bad stuff about recursion. Number one, for Python, recursion is slower than iteration. Speed is a huge turnoff when using recursion. Think about speed. Number two, you may get confused in making a recursive function because oftentimes you might have to think ahead, step by step, what's going to happen? Are you expecting the number to be this and think that the progress keeps on happening according to how you want the progress to be happening? It's harder to write a good recursive function. And last but not least, number three, the bad thing about recursion is that it uses more memory. With all of these cons, why would you even use recursion? The main advantage of recursion is that when you have a very specific problem that has a point A and point B, and you need to get to point B, but to get to point B requires a large number of complex repetitive steps, recursion might be for you. To find out if recursion is for you, I would say Google the problem that you're solving, or think if, hey, is this easier with iteration or is it easier with recursion? If we Google Fibonacci recursive functions, we see immediately that people say, oh, here are some recursive Fibonacci sequences and a comparison between the two. And you can see and tell what other people have experienced with recursion and iteration for your specific problem. For example, in our countdown problem, counting down from 10 to 0, it was fairly easy to make. We could technically have just counted down from 10 to 0, one by one, print 10, print 9, and so on until print 0, and then we print New Year's. It's easier to make with iteration, so I would use iteration. But we learn recursion because you will encounter those very specific problems where recursion is the best or only way to solve the problem. We'll talk about this in future videos. The last topic that we'll talk about in this video is infinite recursion. Infinite recursion is a term used whenever the function keeps calling itself and never stops. There's no base case. There's no endpoint. Here we do def repeat parentheses and all we do is we call repeat again. There's no if statement base case that stops the program. Repeat just keeps on happening again and again. And in Python, the line repeated 990 four times is the maximum recursion death.